Hello and welcome to this week's Wellness Wonder. Today I'm going to take you on a short amble around the fairway area, looking at the maze, the photography exhibition and finishing up at the fabulous Hitchmo Meadow which is just looking divine at the moment. We're in a period of good weather so we hope that you may be inspired to come and have a visit to the Botanic Garden yourself but if not please sit back enjoy the video and follow me on this amble. It's an early morning and the sunlight is really picking up the lovely grass here of the maze area. So the Anamanthele lissoniana is just looking at its best. And wanted to also highlight the lavender here at the back of the rose garden is looking absolutely spectacular at the moment at its peak really we have a different range of lavenders growing here which really make a lovely backdrop to the rose garden you can see here different stages of flower and different forms and sizes really filling the air with that beautiful fragrance One of the lovely things about being in the garden this early is you really get spectacular shadows as you can see here created by the ash tree, the manor ash. Oh. And as we look up the fairway, we can just see a stoter or weasel crossing playing in the short grass there. And obviously really enjoying the space in the sun rather than being in the, the long grass either side. But it's a beautiful view up along the fairway anyway, with the velvety, brilliant green of the freshly mown lawn contrasting highly with the long grass on either side. Just worth noting as we're passing some of the last flowers on Catalpa bignonioides aurea. So this is a golden leafed form of this Indian bean tree. Just lovely to see these trumpet flowers with their speckled throats and yellow markings which presumably aid pollinators into their food. Lovely also just to take in the spectacular shapes of these trees. And passing around by the circadian rhythms beds which have been looking fantastic and still showing flower here particularly the evening primroses and the sculptural form of this woven hurdle fencing. And just looking around now across the International Garden Photographer of the Year exhibition, which has been a real boon for us to have here in summer. Um, we've repositioned it this year and it seems that it's really been a real hub for visitors just to come and enjoy and admire and actually be inspired by some of the spectacular photos that are included in this exhibit. And from here we can take in some of the wilder plantings, the more naturalised plantings at the side of the fen display. So this gives a brilliant sort of lead in to the plantings in the fen. So we can see knapweeds and scabious and also flower heads of teasels here, which really do pierce the plantings.
and there you can see the typical hedgehog form of the teasels but with their flowers so you can just make out the pale pink individual flowers of this spectacular plant. And if you are visiting, you may be lucky to spot in the waters of the fen display an occasional newt or even a grass snake lurking in the waters. And just in the shades and shadows there, I can see the shadowy forms of some of the newts. You just see a tractor there and work starting on the mowing of our long grass areas. But this really is a spot that visitors do like to linger and just take in this quite spectacular view of the bulrushes and sit and gaze deep into the waters of the fen here. We're now heading along towards Corrie Lodge to take in the lovely naturalised dry meadow planting. So there's a slight breeze this morning, which is really, really highlighting the movement across the meadow here, which you can particularly see in the Stiper Gigantia, or Giant Oat. This planting was established in the winter of 2012. The site was cleared and much of the plants that you see here were sown and have emerged in a very, very naturalistic style. And over time, dominant species have thickened and created this lovely kind of interwoven tapestry of plants that you can see here. So looking across, we can see just in the shade there, Rubecchia maxima, these beautiful yellow cone flowers. And in the height of the day, there's some fantastic scents coming through from this, particularly from the Galium verum. And again, one of the weaker species just th showing through one of the penstemons. But great contrast here with the light and the shade again over this very popular feature of the garden. And it's lovely to just wander along this narrow pathway at the back by the hedge. It really gives a sense of immersion rather than standing at the front, which is the typical viewing point. And Corrie Lodge there in the background Just a lovely sight of the globe thistle, Echinops retro, Veach's blue, and also the brilliant pink of this very, very thin stemmed Dianthus carthusianorum, here contrasting against wild carrot Dorcas carota. But one of the species that's really thrived here has been the oregano, Oreganum vulgari, which is this lovely pink plant just here 
you can see the the full flowers in the sun but as we look across the planting it really is very dominant and you can actually see when you start looking that it's alive with bees just seeking out nectar and helping pollinate and this has been a real triumph here in the planting. And then just emerging back onto the main path beside Corrie Lodge This is the main vantage point for the planting. So we can make out in here almost the spent bronzy flower heads of Euphorbia nickiensi. The last flowers of Galium virum. So the bed straw, which does give off a fantastic scent in the heat of the day. The fantastic flower heads of this daisy, Burkea, Purpurea, Silver Spikes, which really does enjoy this well-drained situation. And if you look down the stem, you can see it really is well armed to protect it from predators. And one of the red hot pokers just piercing through these soft mounds of origanum. So here we have Nifophia uvaria. But it really is a splendid sight to see this very, very soft, natural planting, which is relatively low maintenance and a real feast for the eyes at this time of year. Once again, thank you for joining me for another Wellness Wander and we hope that you will soon be able to join us again.